Welcome back to PSC Tech Bytes. First of all, let me remind you to subscribe to this YouTube channel by pressing the red button in the lower right corner of the screen. A while ago, we covered how to customize the form of an item or of a document using the SharePoint framework form customizer functionality and using the dynamic form control provided by PMP. Today, I want to explain you how you can leverage the advanced capabilities of the dynamic form in order to hide some of the fields in the rendering of the form, how to disable some of the fields, and how to provide a custom rendering React control for rendering specific fields. And keep into account that whatever is not yet available through the dynamic form control can be made available by you because it is an open source project and you can contribute to it. So, like always, let me move to the demo environment and let me show you how to extend SPFX form customizer with dynamic form control. So, let's assume that we have an issue tracker list that I created based on the template provided by Microsoft in SharePoint Online. As you can see here, we have fields like the issue, the issue description, the priority, the status, the assigned to, and so on and so forth. Now I want to show you the form customizer that I created for this uh, specific list. And as you can see here, we have some of the fields which are defined in the uh, target list, but I don't see all of them because I decided, explicitly decided my custom form customizer to hide some of the fields and to customize the rendering of the assigned to field. As you can see here, this is the custom assigned to, but I can still select uh, people like myself, for example, and I can assign the task to myself. I can save. Now the default redirection is to the home page, but if we go back here and we refresh the page, we can easily see that now it has been assigned to myself. So how did I implement this uh, extension? First of all, like always, I created a SharePoint Framework extension using the Human Generator for SharePoint Framework, and I selected to create a form customizer extension. Now, in my form customizer extension, I'm relying uh, on a React component, which will do the actual magic, which will take care of the rendering. And in this component, uh, this uh, React component, uh, I decided to use the dynamic form of uh, PMP React controls, family of controls. However, in this specific scenario, I decided to configure the disable fields property disabling the issue source uh, property, which will be shown in the UI as you can see right here, but it is uh, not enabled, the issue source right here, as well as I decided to hide the priority and the status fields, uh, which are not available in the UI of my item. Moreover, I have the fields override properties, which is configured to target a dictionary of uh, field override. As you can see here, the field override property uh, is based on a key, which will be the string uh, of the column internal name of the field you want to override. And then there will be a function, which will get the I dynamic field props uh, type as an input, and which will return a React component. So here I define that for the assigned to field, because this is the internal name of the assigned to field, I want to rely on this function, which I defined in my React component. And the render assigned to function will simply get as an input, as I told you, the iDynamic field props instance. Just for the sake of uh, explaining you what happens, I'm writing on the console the content of this object, and then I'm simply reading some of the properties of that object in order to render the icon, the custom text plus the actual label of the field, and then a people picker control. Here I'm not doing nothing special compared to the out-of-the-box behavior that we have in the dynamic form, but here you can do whatever you like. You can use whatever kind of control you like, you can build your own UI, you can do whatever kind of customization you like. Once the user will select a value and you want to store the value back into the target item, you simply need to trigger the onChange event which is provided through the field properties right here and provide the internal name of the column that you want to update as well as the new value that you want to store in the target field. So let me go back again to this page. Let me refresh it because now I have a different assigned to value which is myself. And let me show you in the console if I do F12 that we have the content 
of the object and as you can see in the object that we get as the input for our custom rendering function we get a bunch of information about the field value about the column internal name about all of the properties uh, depending on the flavor of the field that we are rendering which could be a field of type user like right now can be a field of, of type uh, uh, lookup uh, date and time text and whatever else and you can go through all of these properties while building your custom UI for your custom field rendering. And again, as I said, once you are done, you simply trigger the onChanged function, providing the internal name and the new value that you want to store in the target field. So, really simple. Of course, in order to do that, uh, remember that you need to reference the in the package.json file the SPFX controls React to have the dynamic uh, uh, form as well as if you want to play with it in the serve.json file you have to configure the different uh, settings for the uh, gulp serve option that you want to use in order to debug your solution in the browser like always thank you for watching this video i hope you found it interesting and i'm really looking forward to seeing you next week thank you